The Enola Gay is a Boeing B-29 Superfortress bomber, named after Enola Gay Tibbets, the mother of the pilot, Colonel Paul Tibbets. On 6 August 1945, during the final stages of World War II, it became the first aircraft to drop an atomic bomb. The bomb, code-named, Little Boy, was targeted at the city of Hiroshima, Japan, and caused the near-complete destruction of the city. Enola Gay participated in the second atomic attack as the weather reconnaissance aircraft for the primary target of Kokura. Clouds and drifting smoke resulted in a secondary target, Nagasaki, being bombed instead. After the war, the Enola Gay returned to the United States, where it was operated from Roswell Army Air Field, New Mexico. In May 1946, it was flown to Kwajalein for the Operation Crossroads nuclear tests in the Pacific, but was not chosen to make the test drop at Bikini Atoll. Later that year it was transferred to the Smithsonian Institution, and spent many years parked at air bases exposed to the weather and souvenir hunters, before being disassembled and transported to the Smithsonian Storage Facility at Suitland, Maryland, in 1961. In the 1980s, veterans groups engaged in a call for the Smithsonian to put the aircraft on display, leading to an acrimonious debate about exhibiting the aircraft without a proper historical context. The cockpit and nose section of the aircraft were exhibited at the National Air and Space Museum (NASM) in downtown Washington, D.C., for the bombing's 50th anniversary in 1995, amid controversy. Since 2003, the entire restored B-29 has been on display at NASM's Stephen F. Udvar Hazy Center. The last survivor of its crew, Theodore Van Kirk, died on 28 July 2014 at the age of 93. <laughs> <laughs> World War II <laughs> <laughs> Early history The Enola Gay model number B29 45 Mo, serial number 4486292, Victor number 82, was built by the Glen L. Martin Company, later part of Lockheed Martin, at its Bellevue, Nebraska plant, located at what is now known as Offutt Air Force Base. The bomber was one of the 15 initial examples of B29s built to the silver plate specification. 65 of these eventually being completed during and after World War II giving them the primary ability to function as nuclear weapon delivery aircraft. These modifications included an extensively modified bomb bay with pneumatic doors and British bomb attachment and release systems, reversible pitch propellers that gave more braking power on landing, improved engines with fuel injection and better cooling, and the removal of protective armor and gun turrets. Enola Gay was personally selected by Colonel Paul W. Tibbets, Jr., the commander of the 509th Composite Group, on 9 May 1945, while still on the assembly line. The aircraft was accepted by the United States Army Air Forces USAAF on 18 May 1945 and assigned to the 393D Bombardment Squadron, Heavy, 509th Composite Group. Crew B-9, commanded by Captain Robert A. Lewis, took delivery of the bomber and flew it from Omaha to the 509th IS base at Wendover Army Air Field, Utah, on 14 June 1945. Thirteen days later, the aircraft left Wendover for Guam, where it received a bomb bay modification, and flew to North Field, Tinian, on 6 July. It was initially given the Victor Squadron Assigned Identification number 12, but on 1 August, was given the Circle R tail markings of the 6th Bombardment Group as a security measure and had its Victor number changed to 82 to avoid misidentification with actual 6th Bombardment Group aircraft. During July, the bomber made eight practice or training flights, and flew two missions, on 24 and 26 July, to drop pumpkin bombs on industrial targets at Kobe and Nagoya. Enola Gay was used on 31 July on a rehearsal flight for the actual mission. The partially assembled Little Boy gun-type fission weapon L-11, weighing 10,000 pounds 4, kilograms, was contained inside a 41-inch x 47-inch x 138-inch wooden crate that was secured to the deck of the USS Indianapolis. 
Unlike the six uranium-235 target disks, which were later flown to Tinian on three separate aircraft arriving 28 and 29 July, the assembled projectile with the nine uranium-235 rings installed was shipped in a single-lead lined steel container weighing 300 pounds that was locked to brackets welded to the deck of Captain Charles B. McVeigh III's quarters. Both the L-11 and projectile were dropped off at Tinian on 26 July 1945. <inaudible> <inaudible> Hiroshima mission On 5 August 1945, during preparation for the first atomic mission, Tibbets assumed command of the aircraft and named it after his mother, Enola Gay Tibbets, who, in turn, had been named for the heroine of a novel. When it came to selecting a name for the plane, Tibbets later recalled that My thoughts turned at this point to my courageous red-haired mother, whose quiet confidence had been a source of strength to me since boyhood, and particularly during the soul-searching period when I decided to give up a medical career to become a military pilot. At a time when Dad had thought I had lost my marbles, she had taken my side and said, I know you will be all right, son. The name was painted on the aircraft on 5 August by Alan L. Carl, an enlisted man in the 509th. Regularly assigned aircraft commander Robert Lewis was unhappy to be displaced by Tibbets for this important mission, and became furious when he arrived at the aircraft on the morning of 6 August to see it painted with the now famous nose art. Hiroshima was the primary target of the first nuclear bombing mission on 6 August, with Kokura and Nagasaki as alternative targets. Enola Gay, piloted by Tibbets, took off from North Field, in the northern Mariana Islands, about six hours flight time from Japan, accompanied by two other B-29s, the Great Artiste, carrying instrumentation, and a then nameless aircraft later called Necessary Evil, commanded by Captain George Marquardt, to take photographs. The director of the Manhattan Project, Major General Leslie R. Groves, Jr., wanted the event recorded for posterity, so the takeoff was illuminated by floodlights. When he wanted to taxi, Tibbets leaned out the window to direct the bystanders out of the way. On request, he gave a friendly wave for the cameras. After leaving Tinian, the aircraft made their way separately to Iwo Jima, where they rendezvoused at 2,440 meters 8 feet and set course for Japan. The aircraft arrived over the target in clear visibility at 9,855 meters 32,333 feet. Captain William S. Deke. Parsons of Project Alberta, who was in command of the mission, armed the bomb during the flight to minimize the risks during takeoff. His assistant, 2nd Lieutenant Morris R. Jepson, removed the safety devices 30 minutes before reaching the target area. The release at 8.15 Hiroshima time went as planned, and the little boy took 43 seconds to fall from the aircraft flying at 31,060 feet 9 meters to the predetermined detonation height about 1,968 feet 600 meters above the city. Enola Gay traveled 11.5 miles .5 kilometers before it felt the shock waves from the blast. Although buffeted by the shock, neither Enola Gay nor the Great Artiste was damaged. The detonation created a blast equivalent to 16 kilotons of TNT 67 terajoules. The U-235 weapon was considered very inefficient, with only 1.7% of its fissile material reacting. The radius of total destruction was about 1 mile 1 kilometers, with resulting fires across 4.4 square miles 11 square kilometers. Americans estimated that 4.7 square miles 12 square kilometers of the city were destroyed. Japanese officials determined that 69% of Hiroshima's buildings were destroyed and another 6-7% damaged. Some 70,000 to 80,000 people, 30% of the city's population, were killed by the blast and resultant firestorm, and another 70,000 injured. Out of those killed, 20,000 were soldiers. Enola Gay returned safely to its base on Tinian to great fanfare, touching down at 2.58 p.m., after 12 hours 13 minutes. The great artiste and necessary evil followed at short intervals. Several hundred people, including journalists and photographers, had gathered to watch the plane's return. Tibbets was the first to disembark, and was presented with the Distinguished Service Cross on the spot. <laughs> Nagasaki Mission The Hiroshima mission was followed by another atomic strike. 
Originally scheduled for the 11th of August, it was brought forward by two days to the 9th of August owing to a forecast of bad weather. This time, a Fat Man nuclear weapon was carried by B-29 Boxcar, piloted by Major Charles W. Sweeney. Enola Gay, flown by Captain George Marquardt's crew B-10, was the weather reconnaissance aircraft for Kokura, the primary target. Enola Gay reported clear skies over Kokura, but by the time Boxcar arrived, the city was obscured by smoke from fires from the conventional bombing of Yahata by 224 B-29s the day before. After three unsuccessful passes, Boxcar diverted to its secondary target, Nagasaki, where it dropped its bomb. In contrast to the Hiroshima mission, the Nagasaki mission has been described as tactically botched, although the mission did meet its objectives. The crew encountered a number of problems in execution, and had very little fuel by the time they landed at the emergency backup landing site Yonten Airfield on Okinawa. Crews. <coughs> 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 Hiroshima mission Enola Gay's crew on 6 August 1945, consisted of 12 men. The crew was Colonel Paul W. Tibbetts, Jr. Pilot and Aircraft Commander Captain Robert A. Lewis, Copilot, Enola Gay's regularly assigned Aircraft Commander Asterisk Major Thomas Farabee, Bombardier Captain Theodore Dutch Van Kirk, Navigator Captain William S. Parsons, USN, Weaponeer and Mission Commander. First Lieutenant Jacob Besser, Radar Countermeasures also the only man to fly on both of the nuclear bombing aircraft. Second Lieutenant Morris R. Jepson, Assistant Weaponeer. Staff Sergeant George R. Bob. Karen, Tail Gunner Asterisk. Staff Sergeant Wyatt E. Dusenberry, Flight Engineer Asterisk. Sergeant Joe S. Stiberic, Radar Operator Asterisk. Sergeant Robert H. Schumard, Assistant Flight Engineer Asterisk Private First Class Richard H. Nelson, VHF Radio Operator Asterisk Source, Campbell, 2005, p. 30. Asterisks denote regular crewmen of the Enola Gay. Of Mission Commander Parsons, it was said, There is no one more responsible for getting this bomb out of the laboratory and into some form useful for combat operations than Captain Parsons, by his plain genius in the ordnance business. Nagasaki Mission For the Nagasaki Mission, Enola Gay was flown by Crew B-10, normally assigned to UP and Adam Captain George W. Marquardt, Aircraft Commander 2nd Lieutenant James M. Anderson, Copilot 2nd Lieutenant Russell Gackenbach, Navigator Captain James W. Strudwick, Bombardier 1st Lieutenant Jacob Besser, Radar Countermeasures Technical Sergeant James R. Corliss, Flight Engineer Sergeant Warren L. Coble, Radio Operator Sergeant Joseph M. DeJulio, Radar Operator Sergeant Melvin H. Bierman, Tail Gunner Sergeant Anthony D. Capua, Jr. Assistant Engineer, Scanner Source, Campbell, 2005, pp. 134-191-192 Topic subsequent history On 6 November 1945, Lewis flew the Enola Gay back to the United States, arriving at the 509th IS new base at Roswell Army Air Field, New Mexico, on 8 November. On 29 April 1946, Enola Gay left Roswell as part of the Operation Crossroads nuclear weapons tests in the Pacific. It flew to Kwajalein Atoll on 1 May. It was not chosen to make the test drop at Bikini Atoll and left Kwajalein on 1 July, the date of the test, reaching Fairfield Sassoon Army Air Field, California, the next day. The decision was made to preserve the Enola Gay, and on 24 July 1946, the aircraft was flown to Davis Monthan Air Force Base, Tucson, Arizona, in preparation for storage. On 30 August 1946, the title to the aircraft was transferred to the Smithsonian Institution and the Enola Gay was removed from the USAAF inventory. From 1946 to 1961, the Enola Gay was put into temporary storage at a number of locations. It was at Davis Monthan from 1 September 1946 until 3 July 1949, when it was flown to Orchard Place Air Field, Park Ridge, Illinois, by Tibbetts for acceptance by the Smithsonian. 
It was moved to Pyote Air Force Base, Texas, on 12 January 1952, and then to Andrews Air Force Base, Maryland, on 2 December 1953. Because the Smithsonian had no storage space for the aircraft, it was hoped that the Air Force would guard the plane, but, lacking hangar space, it was left outdoors on a remote part of the air base, exposed to the elements. Souvenir hunters broke in and removed parts. Insects and birds then gained access to the aircraft. Paul E. Garber of the Smithsonian Institution, became concerned about the Enola Gay's condition, and on 10 August 1960, Smithsonian staff began dismantling the aircraft. The components were transported to the Smithsonian Storage Facility at Suitland, Maryland. On 21 July 1961, Enola Gay remained at Suitland for many years. By the early 1980s, two veterans of the 509th, Don Rell and his former navigator in the 509th, Frank B. Stewart, began lobbying for the aircraft to be restored and put on display. They enlisted Tibbetts and Senator Barry Goldwater in their campaign. In 1983, Walter J. Boyne, a former B-52 pilot with the Strategic Air Command, became director of the National Air and Space Museum, and he made the Enola Gaze restoration a priority. Looking at the aircraft, Tibbetts recalled, was a sad meeting. My fond memories, and I don't mean the dropping of the bomb, were the numerous occasions I flew the airplane. I pushed it very, very hard and it never failed me. It was probably the most beautiful piece of machinery that any pilot ever flew. Restoration of the bomber began on 5 December 1984, at the Paul E. Garber Preservation, Restoration, and Storage Facility in Suitland Silver Hill, Maryland. The propellers that were used on the bombing mission were later shipped to Texas A&M University. One of these propellers was trimmed to 12.5 feet (3.8 meters) for use in the university's Oran W. Nix low-speed wind tunnel. The lightweight aluminum variable pitch propeller is powered by a 1,250 kVA electric motor, providing a wind speed up to 200 miles per hour (320 kilometers per hour). Two engines were rebuilt at Garber and two at San Diego Air and Space Museum. Some parts and instruments had been removed and could not be located. Replacements were found or fabricated, and marked so that future curators could distinguish them from the original components. Topic restoration Topic Exhibition controversy Enola Gay became the center of a controversy at the Smithsonian Institution when the museum planned to put its fuselage on public display in 1995 as part of an exhibit commemorating the 50th anniversary of the atomic bombing of Hiroshima. The exhibit, The Crossroads, The End of World War II, The Atomic Bomb and the Cold War, was drafted by the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum staff, and arranged around the restored Enola Gay. Critics of the planned exhibit, especially those of the American Legion and the Air Force Association, charged that the exhibit focused too much attention on the Japanese casualties inflicted by the nuclear bomb, rather than on the motivations for the bombing or the discussion of the bomb's role in ending the conflict with Japan. The exhibit brought to national attention many long-standing academic and political issues related to retrospective views of the bombings. As a result, after various failed attempts to revise the exhibit in order to meet the satisfaction of competing interest groups, the exhibit was cancelled on 30 January 1995. Martin O. Harwit, director of the National Air and Space Museum, was compelled to resign over the controversy. He later reflected that, the dispute was not simply about the atomic bomb. Rather, the dispute was sometimes a symbolic issue in a culture war in which many Americans lumped together the seeming decline of American power, the difficulties of the domestic economy, the threats in world trade and especially Japan's successes, the loss of domestic jobs, and even changes in American gender roles and shifts in the American family. To a number of Americans, the very people responsible for the script were the people who were changing America. The bomb, representing the end of World War II and suggesting the height of American power was to be celebrated. It was, in this judgment, a crucial symbol of America's good war, one fought justly for noble purposes at a time when America was united. Those who in any way questioned the bomb's use were, in this emotional framework, the enemies of America. The forward fuselage went on display on 28 June 1995. On 2 July 1995, three people were arrested for throwing ash and human blood on the aircraft's fuselage, following an earlier incident in which a protester had thrown red paint over the gallery's carpeting. The exhibition closed on 18 May 1998, and the fuselage was returned to the Garber facility for final restoration. 
Topic: <laughs> Complete restoration and display. Restoration work began in 1984, and would eventually require 300,000 staff hours. While the fuselage was on display, from 1995 to 1998, work continued on the remaining unrestored components. The aircraft was shipped in pieces to the National Air and Space Museum's Stephen F. Udvar Hazy Center in Chantilly, Virginia from March to June 2003, with the fuselage and wings reunited for the first time since 1960 on 10 April 2003 and assembly completed on 8 August 2003. The aircraft has been on display at the Udvar Hazy Center since the museum annex opened on 15 December 2003. As a result of the earlier controversy, the signage around the aircraft provided only the same succinct technical data as is provided for other aircraft in the museum, without discussion of the controversial issues. It read, Boeing's B-29 Superfortress was the most sophisticated propeller-driven bomber of World War II, and the first bomber to house its crew in pressurized compartments. Although designed to fight in the European theater, the B-29 found its niche on the other side of the globe. In the Pacific, B-29s delivered a variety of aerial weapons, conventional bombs, incendiary bombs, mines, and two nuclear weapons. On August 6, 1945, this Martin-built B-29-45 Mo dropped the first atomic weapon used in combat on Hiroshima, Japan. Three days later, Boxcar on display at the U.S. Air Force Museum near Dayton, Ohio dropped a second atomic bomb on Nagasaki, Japan. Enola Gay flew as the advance weather reconnaissance aircraft that day. A third B-29, the Great Artiste, flew as an observation aircraft on both missions. Transferred from the U.S. Air Force Wingspan, 43 meters 141 feet 3 in Length, 30.2 meters 99 feet Height, 9 meters 27 feet 9 in Weight, empty, 32,580 kilograms, 71,826 pounds. Weight, gross, 63,504 kilograms, 140,000 pounds. Top speed, 546 kilometers per hour, 339 miles per hour. Engines, four right R3350 57 cyclone turbo supercharged radials, 2,200 horsepower. Crew, 12 Hiroshima Mission Armament, 2.50 caliber machine guns Ordnance, Little Boy Atomic Bomb Manufacturer, Martin Co., Omaha, Nebraska, 1945 A1950100000 The display of the Enola Gay without reference to the historical context of World War II, the Cold War, or the development and deployment of nuclear weapons aroused controversy. A petition from a group calling themselves the Committee for a National Discussion of Nuclear History and Current Policy bemoaned the display of Enola Gay as a technological achievement, which it described as an "...extraordinary callousness toward the victims, indifference to the deep divisions among American citizens about the propriety of these actions, and disregard for the feelings of most of the world's peoples." It attracted signatures from notable figures including historian Gar Alperovitz, social critic Noam Chomsky, whistleblower Daniel Ellsberg, physicist Joseph Rotblat, writer Kurt Vonnegut, producer Norman Lear, actor Martin Sheen and filmmaker Oliver Stone. Topic references topic Notes topic Citations topic Bibliography topic Further reading topic External links The Smithsonian site on Enola Gay includes links to crew lists and other details Eyewitnesses to Hiroshima, Time Magazine, 1 August 2005 Inside the Enola Gay, Air and Space, 18 May 2010